Okay, so as you prepare to write your methods section, um, I wanted to record this video and give you a little bit of guidance. Um, so you should have hopefully watched the video on the introduction section. In that video, I give you um, some hints and suggestions about the paper as a whole. So the paper should take a specific shape. What is that shape? What are the kinds of things that you should be doing to weave these different sections together? So on and so forth. For that information, please see that introduction video. For now, uh, let's just briefly talk about the method section. And so let me just come right out and tell you the most important thing about the method section up front, and that is that it should be a recipe. So what I mean is that after reading your method section, and only your method section, so you can't talk to the person, you can't email the person, they can't read anything additional about your paper. With the method section alone, that researcher should be able to exactly replicate or redo your study. So I should be able to set up a study that exactly mirrors what you did and then launch that survey. This is the recipe that tells other people how to do what you did. So just uh, just as in, in cooking, if you're trying to cook something, um, if you've ever had the experience where you have a really vague recipe, you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it's a Pinterest fail, right? So you want your research article to be incredibly detailed. Um, you need details about exactly how the variables were measured. What kinds of things did you ask about? What kinds of things did you manipulate? Did you control for anything? How did you do that? Um, how did you operationally define your variables? So it's all of that stuff that we've been talking about um, in the textbook is, is coming to life in the methods section. So we have a couple of subheadings within the methods section, and the first is participants and subjects. So let me just start first off. Um, if you're doing human research, always, always, always put participants. For um, animal research, it will be subjects. So there's some controversy in the field about this shift. We used to, in human research, say subjects. Now it's considered more politically correct to say participants. So just get in the habit, if you're studying people, to put participants. So in this part of the method section, you'll talk about the kinds of people that participated in your study. So how old were they? What distribution of gender did you have? Um, were they all high income, low income? How was the income distributed? Anything about those people that could have influenced your results should go into the participant section. So for the purposes of our course and our papers, we'll say, you know, um, students taking P211 in the fall of 2014 uh, took a survey, blah, 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 blah. And for previous iterations of the class, of course, you'll have to update those dates. Um, but you'll just say, uh, when you collected data from the participants, how did you do it? Was it online? Was it in person? Did you use Survey Gizmo? Did you use Survey Monkey? Did you use the Canvas system? You know, how did you collect that data? And then tell us about those people. So participants ranged in age from 18 to 62, with a mean age of blah, 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 or the majority of participants fell between the ages of 18 and 25, whatever kind of age information you can give us, please do so. Same goes for gender. So, you know, 65% of the participants were female um, and fell in this income bracket or something like that. So you don't have to put percentage of both female and male because they should add up to 100, right? So you don't need to say 65% per, were female, 35% were male. That's redundant. It's just taking up extra space in your paper. You can just give one side of it when there are only two groups. So in the participant section, tell us about the people. It's going to let us know how confident we are in the generalizability of your results. Um, and, and how you chose your participants, you know, was it a convenient sample, was it a random sample, um, was it a snowball sample, all of those different kinds of questions should be answered in these sections here. So in the materials section, you'll talk about the survey that you gave. So in this case, it's going to be a pretty simple, uh, really, method section overall, but particularly 
particularly the materials, just talk about the two survey questions that you used, how the Likert scale was rated. So by Likert, I mean on most of those questions, people rated from a 1 to 7 how much they agree to the statement, how much the statement describes them. That's a Likert scale. We need to know what the 1 means. Did that mean strongly agree, strongly disagree, strongly applies to me, so on and so forth. What did the 7 mean? You'll talk about that in materials. In the materials section, you would typically include information on reliability. Here we're only using two questions, so we won't have that kind of data. But when you move into um, statistics, if you end up going to grad school, if you do research on your own, um, that's something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. That reliability will become an issue as you start using um, bigger surveys. So procedure, this is probably uh, the most important part. This is where you're going to walk through the study from beginning to end. So that's when you say um, students in P211 were instructed to complete a survey of approximately, you know, whatever, 59 questions or however many it happened to be. Students first asked questions about blah 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 and then at the end they completed demographics questions or you know whatever order it went through so you need to give a sense of what the study was from beginning to end so again after reading the methods section and the three subsections participants materials procedure um, some researcher that is not at all familiar with your work should be able to exactly replicate what you did. So this will be a very detailed section of your paper, as will the results that you'll be doing in a week or so. So again, let me tell you, this is the recipe. This is the recipe for your study that other people will need to follow. So be as detailed as you can.